In the early days of auto racing, technology was a word that didn't get used very much. The people who built and raced these primitive creations relied on intuition, instinct, and a few lucky guesses. Today, the stakes in racing are enormously higher in terms of prestige, performance, and payoff. It's no longer possible to fly by the seat of your pants when preparing a race car that can compete head-to-head -head with factory-sponsored high-dollar competitors. A little misplaced guesswork in the wrong place at the wrong time can make for some rough sledding at the track. The Jim Downing prepared Mazda GTO race cars that slug it out in international long-distance events have plugged in, literally, to a high-tech solution to a couple of eternal puzzles that racers have forever grappled with. How to improve the performance of the car and how to improve the performance of the driver. Precision Instruments of Noblesville, Indiana has outfitted the Mazdas with an onboard information gathering system that can only be described as remarkable. Richard Milano of PI Industries explains what their system can do. This particular instrumentation is state-of-the-art onboard computer technology. What it provides the race team is at the racetrack specific information about segments on the track, RPM graphs and speed graphs to set up the race car properly. Let's take a closer look at the Precision Instruments built by Precision Instruments. This module that sits in front of the driver brings new meaning to the term fully informed. What you have is nine positions on the display. The first position provides a lap time. The second position will provide a lap count. In position two on the rotary, rotary will give him speed, and what it does is actually latch the speed. In other words, when the driver goes down a straightaway, it'll provide him a, a number in which when he enters the corner, it'll identify the top speed in which he achieved on the straightaway. As he exits the corner, it will then latch the speed and tell him specifically how slow he actually went through the corner or the slowest point in which he went uh, beyond that uh, point. What you have here is Telltale information, normal instrumentation such as water temperatures, oil temperatures, oil pressures, um, pressure for fuel in this particular form, racing mile per hour, and a specific readout on RPMs, which is also complemented by a bar graph that the driver can very easily watch and flash when it goes beyond a specific limit. This is also calibrated by thresholds. In the event they were to exceed a water temperature or an oil pressure situation, it will instantly alarm and flash that you have exceeded that particular parameter, again, allowing the driver to drive the race car and not have to worry about analog gauges. This module can also be programmed to do other informative duties. But race drivers are creatures of habit, and few have developed their keen sense of timing and finesse, and at the same time, perfected a comprehensive understanding of computer sciences. Richard says his system won't cause driver anxiety. It does not necessitate full-time engineering or technical staff. Um, after you have understood the system and you have spent some time with it, you'll find it comparable to operating your normal PC at home. Not only can the essential information relating to the car's vital signs be monitored at will, but the PI system can also keep a watchful eye on how consistently the driver laps the race course. This handheld display, or buffer, plugs into the module on the race car. Then what, Richard? It tells him specifically it is his ninth outing and it is his 35th lap. Now it's telling him in time how long it took him to go around the track one time and it tells him his miles per hour. As we scroll down, we actually see a segment. A segment is a part of the racetrack. And in this particular segment, it took 2.91 seconds to cover that particular point in linear distance. It tells him the speed in which he was going at that segment. And it also tells us that it was a straightaway. It takes linear distance to the track and draws it out, breaks it down into particular parts and allows you to study that particular part and see what you were doing well and what you were not doing well. There's also an electric eye mounted on the car to record lap times with minute accuracy. How do the drivers feel about a machine that keeps an accurate account of how well the car and themselves are functioning together? You might think there'd be a little discomfort in having this electronic watchdog keeping tabs. Mazda team driver Pete Halsmer doesn't feel that way. I'm still getting used to it a little bit, but uh, I think it's really helpful. It, it uh, does a lot of memory work for the drivers. Uh, you know, as we get older, we have trouble with our memories, so, so uh, it makes us old drivers really able to handle the situation really well. <laughs> uh, it is helpful. We're able to bring back a lot of information uh, 
pull it out of the computer, print it out, uh, so that we don't have to look in the middle of the corners at bad times, trying to evaluate what's happening with the car. And we can't sit there and watch the instrumentation as we're going through the corner. We have to look up at the track, and, and this computer will do that. Eighty years ago, auto racing was 10% science and 90% survival. What would yesterday's drivers think about where racing has finally led? What was once a sport where winning was more a function of courage than computerization has now evolved into a high-tech showcase where pistons and pushrods team up with sensors and software. I think what we're very happy to be able to look at here is it provides a state-of-the-art piece of electronics that is very practical and usable to help the race teams in identifying the quickest and the safest setups in terms of competition.